The path of recovery has been a difficult one, and a good place to begin is by thanking those on the front line fighting the pandemic, the essential workers who kept the economy going, those who have cared for others in need, and those in medical research, business, and government who came together to discover, produce, and widely distribute effective vaccines in record time. We should also keep in our thoughts those who have lost their lives from COVID, as well as their loved ones. Strong policy support has fueled a vigorous but uneven recovery, one that is, in many respects, historically anomalous. In a reversal of typical patterns in a downturn, aggregate personal income rose rather than fell, and households massively shifted their spending from services to manufactured goods. Booming demand for goods and the strength and speed of the reopening have led to shortages and bottlenecks, leaving the COVID-constrained supply side unable to keep up. The result has been elevated inflation in durable goods, a sector that has experienced an annual inflation rate well below zero over the past quarter century. Labor market conditions are improving but turbulent, and the pandemic continues to threaten not only health and life, but also economic activity. Many other advanced economies are experiencing similarly unusual conditions. In my comments today, I will focus on the Fed's efforts to promote our maximum employment and price stability goals amid this upheaval, and suggest how lessons from history and a careful focus on incoming data and the evolving risks offer useful guidance for today's unique monetary policy challenges. The pandemic recession, the briefest yet deepest on record, displaced roughly 30 million workers in the space of two months. The decline in output in the second quarter of 2020 was twice the full decline during the Great Recession. But the pace of the recovery has exceeded expectations, with output surpassing its previous peak after only four quarters, less than half the time required following the Great Recession. As is typically the case, the recovery in employment has lagged that in output. Nonetheless, employment gains have also come faster than expected. The economic downturn has not fallen equally on all Americans and those least able to shoulder the burden have been hardest hit. In particular, despite progress, joblessness continues to fall disproportionately on lower wage workers in the service sector and on African Americans and Hispanics. The unevenness of the recovery can further be seen through the lens of the sectoral shift of spending into goods, particularly durable goods such as appliances, furniture, and cars, and away from services, particularly in-person services in areas such as travel and leisure. As the pandemic struck, restaurant meals fell 45%, air travel 95%, and dentist visits 65%. Even today, with overall GDP and consumption spending more than fully recovered, services spending remains about 7% below trend. Total employment is now 6 million below its February 2020 level, and 5 million of that shortfall is in the still depressed service sector. In contrast, <clears throat> spending on durable goods has boomed since the start of the recovery and is now running about 20% above the pre-pandemic level. With demand outstripping pandemic-afflicted supply, rising durables prices are a principal factor lifting inflation well above our 2% objective. Given the ongoing upheaval in the economy, some strains and surprises are inevitable. The job of monetary policy is to promote maximum employment and price stability as the economy works through this challenging period. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.